I never get tired of that entrance. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first century. Are you ready to dig in? Let's go. My geosensors indicate we are in Bethany, a small town a couple of miles from Jerusalem. Hi, this is Joy. Thanks for coming with us on this journey where we saw how a real superstar behaves. Jesus came to Jerusalem for the Passover from the Mount of Olives, approaching the city from this side. As Jesus entered the city, the crowd waved palm branches. For the Jewish people, palm branches were a symbol of rejoicing. Famous Roman authors wrote about how for the Romans, palms signified victory. These Roman coins were made in Israel around the time of Jesus. Notice the palm branch decorating the front of the coin. Speaking of coins, remember how Jesus ran the money changers out of the temple? <laughs> that was a surprise! That scene would have taken place in this area of the temple, known as the Court of the Gentiles. You can still see the places where the merchants and the money changers would have worked. People coming to the temple would often buy the animals they would offer for sacrifice. The money changers would take the coins from their country and trade them for the Tyrian shekel, a coin that could be used in Jerusalem. The money changers charged a fee, of course. When Jesus drove out the money changers, he upset the authorities, who began to plot against Jesus. Outrageous! He will not get away with this! The plot against Jesus brought together three unlikely groups of people. The first were the religious leaders. During this time, their chief was the high priest, Caiaphas. This is an ossuary, a coffin for bones from the Caiaphas family tomb. It bears an inscription with Caiaphas' name. The second group was the Romans, who ruled over the Jewish people. If they start calling him king, there will be a rebellion. Isn't that Rome's problem? Here is a statue of Tiberius Caesar, who was emperor of Rome at the time. He appointed Pontius Pilate as governor of Judea, and Pilate would be the judge in Jesus' trial. The third member of the group against Jesus was a painful surprise. Thirty pieces of silver? When will you deliver Jesus? When the time is right. Even one of Jesus' own disciples betrayed him. Let's see what you can remember from today's story. What did people wave at Jesus when he arrived in Jerusalem? A. Flags B. Palm branches C. Their hands Or D. Autograph books That's right! The correct answer is B. Palm branches Palm branches were a symbol of victory and often waved when a king returned to his kingdom. They were also shaken when reciting Psalm 118.25, O Lord, save us, which translates to Hosanna. Next question. What did Jesus ride into Jerusalem? Was it A, a limousine, B, a stallion, C, a donkey, or D, a helicopter? The correct answer is C, a donkey. Jesus shouldn't be riding a donkey. A king rides a stallion. Many people would have expected Jesus to arrive as a warrior king on a stallion. But Jesus came into Jerusalem riding a donkey. This fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah who said, Everyone in Jerusalem, celebrate and shout. Your king has won a victory and he is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. Jesus was making it clear that he was indeed a king just not a warrior king. Instead, he was entering Jerusalem as a humble servant of God. Wow, impressive and important. My InfoScanner archive tells me Jesus defied expectations in many ways. Take a look at these examples. Jesus went into Jerusalem just about every day during the final week before his death. He would spend all day teaching and healing He's tired, Peter. He wants to visit Mary and Martha in Bethany and rest for a while. Bethany was within walking distance of Jerusalem, the perfect location for Jesus to stay. 
Today, Bethany is now the site of the modern village of Elazaria. Excavations in Bethany have uncovered Christian churches dating back to the 4th century AD. They've even uncovered what many believe to be the tomb of Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary. While Jesus was in Bethany, Mary broke open a jar of expensive perfumed oil and washed Jesus' feet. Remember how upset Judas was when she did this? Stop that woman! You're wasting expensive oil. The plant used to make this perfume was exotic and didn't grow in this region. The perfume would have to come all the way from India. The jars were sealed to keep the expensive perfume from spilling during the journey. The jar would break when it was opened, so it could only be used once. Mary felt that Jesus was important enough to break this jar. Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. On his final night before his betrayal, Jesus shared one last supper with his disciples. This meal would be reenacted by the Christian church from that point to the modern day. Take this and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Here is a wall painting of a group of Christians in the third century AD celebrating the Last Supper. Before they ate, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Typically, only someone in the low position of a servant would wash someone's feet. Remember how confused Chris was that Jesus would do such a thing? He's about to become king, Giz. He's a superstar. I mean, everybody can tell how great Jesus is, but he's in there just washing people's feet. Jesus was making a point. Just as Mary was preparing Jesus for his death by washing his feet, Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples to show them how they should treat each other. And if your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you should do the same for each other. Jesus is indeed King and Lord. He showed us he was King from his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, to his authority in the temple, to his anointing in Bethany. But he also showed us that being great means being the servant of all. That reminds me of today's superverse, Philippians 2.3. Don't be jealous or proud, but be humble and consider others more important than yourselves. Our time is up! To serve or be served. That is the royal question. Until next time, this is Gizmo out. Rocket Star, up, up, and away! Genesis to Revelation points to one man who would change the world. God's own son, Jesus. Come with us through time as we look at the signposts leading to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hello, Gizmo here. In this adventure, we were with Jesus as he celebrated the Passover dinner, called the Seder, with his disciples. Passover recalls the night Moses led the Israelite slaves out of Egypt. The angel of the Lord brought the final plague on Egypt, the death of all the firstborn sons. God told the Israelites to take the blood from an unblemished lamb and using a hyssop branch, spread the blood over the doorpost. The angel would then pass over the marked houses saving the lives of those protected by the blood. Passover is the annual festival celebrating this event. The festival would include the Seder meal. To this day, Jews continue to celebrate Passover Seder every year, just as Jesus did with his disciples. A ceremonial washing of the hands takes place near the start of the Seder service. Jesus took part in this tradition, but instead of simply washing his hands, he showed his humility by washing the feet of his disciples. Matzah, unleavened bread, is used to show that when the children of Israel fled from Egypt, they did not have time to allow their dough to rise. 
Those who know Jesus as the Messiah see even more symbolism in the bread. Notice the stripes and how the bread is pierced? This reminds us of the prophecies from centuries before Jesus was born. The prophet Isaiah predicted, By his stripes we are healed. The prophet Zechariah said this of the Messiah to come, And they will look upon me, whom they pierced. These prophecies point to Jesus, who would be whipped and pierced with nails on a cross. During the Seder, three pieces of matzah are placed in a white cloth. The middle piece is taken out and broken. We can see how the middle piece represents Jesus and his death, how he would be broken for us. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Seder plate includes the bone of a lamb to remind us of those who were saved by the blood of the lamb that was put on the doorposts. The lamb is also a symbol of Jesus. Anyone who is covered by his sacrificial blood will be saved. The Apostle Paul said, our Passover lamb is Christ who has already been sacrificed. Near the end of the Passover Seder, the participants drink a cup of wine known as the cup of redemption. Jesus claimed that he was the cup of redemption. Take this and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. The Passover Seder, a reminder of how the Israelites were saved from slavery in Egypt, is also a reminder of how we are saved by the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus started his celebration of the Seder by showing us how to serve each other, and then gave the ultimate act of service by becoming the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. <laughs>